Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see what is the difference between a dedicated and a serverless pool. So in case you have been watching my sign up series, you already know what a dedicated and a serverless pool is and why do we use it. So in today's video, we are going to see what is the exact difference between both of them and because it is a very important concept. So before moving on, I do recommend all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn and I will leave the link in the description box as well. So let's move ahead and see exactly what is the difference between a dedicated and a serverless pool. So when we talk about a dedicated pool and a serverless pool, the very basic difference lies in its functionality and its architecture. So when you talk about the functionality, dedicated pool is nothing but it is a traditional SQL data warehouse itself, right? It is your traditional SQL data warehouse. Now, just because it is, you know, your SQL data warehouse, it leverages your node based architecture, which is nothing but your massive parallel processing architecture, which distributes your workload across the multiple nodes. So that is what your dedicated pool is all about. But when you talk about a serverless, it is nothing but it is a query service. You know, it helps you to query your data. That is what your serverless is. You know, you have your data already present in your data lake and serverless pool is just helping you to query that data using your T-SQL commands. And when you talk about the architecture, dedicated pool, now since it is, um, you know, Azure SQL data warehouse, it stores your data in a tabular format, right? It stores your data in tables. So storage and compute is separate when you talk about a dedicated pool. Dedicated pools have MPP architecture, your massive parallel processing architecture where your storage is separate than compute. But when you talk about serverless, right, it does not store any data. Your data is already stored in your data lay and this is just helping you to query your data by using distributed query processing engine. So the basic functionality and architecture itself is different. I will show you this slide which I've already explained in my signups play series as well. When you look at the dedicated pool, right, it has MPP architecture where, you know, any query that you fire, it goes to the control node and then it distributes its, it across the set defined number of compute nodes which you have to define and then you have your azure storage as well right linked to it so your storage is there and your storage and compute is actually there in your dedicated pool but when you talk about serverless right you do not define any storage your storage is already there you have your data late and your serverless sql pool helps you to query your data using the distributed query processing engine now, when you talk about infrastructure, I said that dedicated pool, you have to define the number of nodes, right? So that is nothing but the number of servers. You have to define it your own self, by your own self. You have to go click on create a dedicated pool. You have to define the configurations for it. You have to define how many servers that you want to use for your dedicated pool. And that is where you define the data warehouse units because you are defining how many data warehouse units you want to choose now based on the, your choice your dedicated pool will spin up the number of machines the configurations of the machines it will spin up based on your choice but when you talk about serverless it automatically scales up and down because the compute is allocated and it is managed by the Microsoft. When your workload is high, Microsoft will automatically give the machines to you. When your workload is low, it is automatically going to take up the machines from, uh, you know, from your serverless. Similarly, when you talk about the cost, now in dedicated pool, you are defining how many data warehouse units you want. Now, in that case, you will be charged based on data warehouse units. You will be charged for the time your machines were active, right? You will be charged. So no matter you have used your machines or not, but those machines were allocated to you for that much specific period of time for those many hours. So you have to pay for those many number of hours, right? So that is how it actually charges you. So cost is also divided into storage as well as compute, right? If you increase the number of data warehouse units, your performance also increases and at the same time your cost also increases in case of dedicated pool. So, but when you talk about serverless, right? Serverless, you have to pay exactly based on the, you know, query that you fire. So if you are firing a heavy workload query, you know, 
then in that case your charge will be little on the higher side when you're firing a lower workload query then in that case your charge will be lower now it is completely query pro uh, uh, you know query dependent the amount of data that you're trying to process by the query but in dedicated pool it is dependent on your data warehouse units now when you talk about the performance part performance in dedicated pools is of course much better than the serverless especially when your workloads are high why because when you talk about dedicated pool, it, it, it has a good distribution uh, strategy. In my previous video, I've already talked about your hash distribution, your round robin distributions that we have in the dedicated pool. So it has a distribution strategy on how it distributes the, your data to the nodes. It helps you to cache the data as well. Now, just because you can cache the data here, right? You have a storage, you can cache the data. That's why your performance is also higher. Similarly, it also offers you higher compression and ha, you know you also have the partitioning in the dedicated pool due to which your query performance on the da large data set is very good in case of dedicated also in case of power bi dedicated pool are really good options so when you go to the serverless right especially for your power bi now your direct query mode in power bi is actually processing large amount of data right due to which your power bi performance slows down a lot in case of serverless and also the you know the things like the distribution strategy, caching of the data that is not available in the serverless due to which whenever you're processing higher workloads, right, in that case serverless is not known to perform very well. Now similarly, based on whatever we have discussed until now, right, so similarly when you try to query using a dedicated and a serverless pool, there will be difference in the functionalities that you can use for both of them. So when you talk about things like functions like open row set we have also used in it in our synapse play series so open row set is specifically used to query the data which is present in the data lake right so it is not you cannot use open row set in the dedicated pool because dedicated pool will ask you to create your external data source it will like create uh, it will ask you to create external file format right and then it will help you to query the data now, similarly, when you talk about few commands, right, delete from or delete this, DML commands, basically, in that case, dedicated pool actually supports all those commands, right, because it is using the table to work on. But when you talk about serverless, right, it supports open row set because open row sets helps you to directly query the data from the data lake. And then it help uh, and, and the commands like your delete, these are not uh, supported in the serverless right because it is not using your table it is just querying the data from your table uh, from an external location which is which can be your uh, you know data lake for that matter now similarly it also helps to you know query both kind of workloads whether it is your structured data or unstructured data or even different kind of file formats so that is where you know serverless actually helps a lot as well so these were the few differences between your dedicated and your serverless pool i hope you liked this video and you liked you know this distinction and it was very clear do let me know in the comment section if you have any doubts and also do remember to like share and subscribe my channel for more of such videos